What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a couple of cheap air horn kits that you can buy on eBay or on auto parts stores. I'm going to show you how to install them and I'm going to see if they're actually worth installing in your car. Check it out. As you might have already seen, I installed a fire truck horn on my F-150, which goes really well. It's great for general shenanigans. <laughs> and it's great for scaring Eric. But there's not a whole lot of room in my Nissan for installing a horn like that. So I figured one of these cheap air horn kits would probably be a good substitute. So let's give it a shot. I understand that when installing one of these kits, it's really tempting to just hook this directly up to the power that's going to your existing horn. It's not gonna work very well because this draws more amperage than your horn does. So you're gonna be blowing fuses left and right if you try to do that. So the way to circumvent that is with a relay and some of the kits come with them some don't if, if yours doesn't come with a relay go get one because you're gonna need it and I understand that it might seem like it's really tricky to install one of these things but I'm gonna take away all that mystique I'm gonna unveil this and I'll show you how to hook these up any relay is gonna be about the same so you have your power in and your power out so this is the one that's coming from your battery and going to your compressor you can swap these around it does not matter which one you use this is your coil, and this is what actually physically turns the power on, so it goes from one wire to the other on this side. So energizing this coil is what's gonna activate your horn. And I think I have a way to show you that's gonna better illustrate what I'm talking about here. Relays are actually really simple. They just don't make any sense to people who have never used them before. But I like to think of them just like a light switch. So these two red wires, this is your power in and your power out, and you can flip-flop those, it actually doesn't matter. But a light switch, you just go up to it and flick it, and then the, the power goes from one wire to the other, and vice versa. So, a relay is just like a light switch, but instead of flicking a mechanical switch, it uses electricity to flip the switch for you. And so, the black and the white are the switch. And this is a 12-volt relay, we have a 12-volt battery, and you can hear when I engage this. It's a very faint click, but you can hear it work. So. This being a normally open switch, that means there's no contact between these two wires until the power is engaged. So I set up the meter here, so it's actually going to indicate when it's working. So when you hear the beep, that means that there's power going from one red wire to the other red wire. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now we just need to hook the horn up to that. We got everything hooked up and we moved our operation outside because my wife said this is not an inside horn, which maybe she has a point, I don't know. But remember, we're just using this as a temporary just for setup purposes. We're gonna actually be installing it with the car battery, but for the example, we have our grounds hooked up and they're not active unless there's actually power running through it. So these are good to go. You can have them hooked up all the time. We have one of the reds hooked up to the relay. Remember, it doesn't matter which one. The other side, we have the other red hooked up to the positive side of the compressor and then the ground connected already. So you just gotta remember the actual signal wires that engage the contact inside of the relay, the ground's already hooked up. And then this goes to the positive on the battery. So this is basically how it's going to actually work inside of the car with this red hooked directly to the positive terminal on the battery and these hooked anywhere to the ground, which we'll go over that in a minute. So where does this one hook up? And that's the best part of the equation actually. In order to change as little as possible, I just unplugged the wire that was going to the horn. There's only one wire and that's a hot wire when you push your horn button in your car. And then the other side of the relay is going to your negative post on your battery. And this is just for proof of concept so you guys can actually see the relay working. And then we're gonna hook up the power. So right now there's no actual power that's gonna be flowing through it. You're just gonna be able to see how it works. Sounds like it's working fine, so now it's just time to make it happen. So we got the horn nestled up against the firewall there, and fortunately I was able to find a hold in here and just pull out the factory screw, and the screw that came with the horn was able to fit inside of there, so that worked out pretty well. And we're using that for grounding the compressor, so that's going to the negative end of the compressor. Then the positive has to go back to the relay, which it was kind of difficult to find a good way to go back to the relay. But when we got there, obviously it's going on one of the powered sides. So it's going to one of the red wires, and the other one goes directly to the battery. And of course we have the ground for the relay, and then we have the signal wire for the relay that comes directly from your horn. And if you did all this correctly, if you hit the switch on your steering wheel, that should activate the horn. 
Of course, there's one final test that we have to do before we can actually call this a complete success. In my past life, I definitely would have just used this system as is, and I'm not saying that as an anecdote, I've done that before, but that's not really the right way to do it, especially when I'm showing you guys. The way you wanna do it anytime you hook something that's not installed in your car already to your hot side of your battery, you wanna install an inline fuse. And not just for you guys, my dad's gonna watch this, and if he sees me do this without installing a fuse, he's not gonna be able to sleep right for weeks. So we're gonna do it right. I picked up two different air horn kits for this experiment, and while they're both pretty similar, I do really prefer the tone of the large single horn, although they are both pretty loud, and if you're really just out for shenanigans, either one of them is gonna work great. But at the end of the day, nothing compares to the fire truck horn that's on my F-150. That is really the perfect air horn in my opinion. And if you have the available space and the financial resources to do it, definitely go that route. Although it's about 10 times the cost. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.